O'Malley versus Marab. The fight that Dana White is absolutely terrified. Is there been a fight that Dana White is more terrified and excited about the outcome? If O'Malley wins, he's on cloud nine. If Marab wins, it's it, you're just going to see Dana in the corner in the fetal position. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> welcome to Winning in the Shadows, everyone. I'm Andy, that's Jim. Let's get into uh, breaking down these fights. Uh, we're starting with uh, Raul Rusas. We're reaching Lang. Uh, Rose is the huge favorite for obvious reasons. Uh, what's your breakdown on this fight here, Jim? They're serving this kid up. I mean, it, it's, it's not, not, not a whole lot to be said. Like even from a stylistic standpoint, uh, Rose is going to control the grappling. Um, I hope he doesn't fall in love with his hands and not stick to the game plan. But I think this kid knows where his, you know, his lie. Um, they're just going to serve him up. They're going to continue to serve him up until he actually has to go against a legit competition. Um, not that Ori Lang is not, but he doesn't have the skills to stop Rosas. Let's let's be real about this. And Rosas will be shown one thing is that when he gets that backpack position, you're not getting him off you. He's. I loved what we saw from him because uh, you were mainly concerned. You brought it up. I agreed with you. We were concerned about his uh, mental makeup. And I thought he came out the last fight and kind of really squashed all those rumors about him having a big head. Um, I think this is build up. It's, there's a reason this is going to kick off the card. Uh, as far as a total, whether this fight finishes or not, this is tough. I don't know if it's really him by decision or by submission. I'm not picking him by knockout. That's for sure. But no, yeah. no, you can. Yeah. This is another one. I, the the theme that Jim and I have been talking about, and we're going to continue talking about is some of these mm -hmm. overs. Um, now, the thing with Rosas is the submission is always live. So yes. I, you know, the, what Jim and I have been talking about is some of these fights that you you go, oh, those are unders, and a lot of them are going overs. Um, but when you do have a guy that's you know that can absolutely submit, it's it, it kind of. It kind of gives you a little red flag for taking the over. What we're noticing is these strikers, if it if it's not a round one knockout, they just don't have the power with the mm -hmm. new gloves and such. So, um, you know, that being said, you know, he does have submissions. Um, Richie Lang just, I mean, he got taken down by Jay Perrin. Uh, Johnny Munoz mm -hmm. uh, took him down. Cody Durden took him down a lot. This is a guy that has not shown very good um you know, defense. This no contest against Daniel Marcos. He was just getting obliterated. Um, he was getting his ass kicked. And I was so mad about that one because we had a nice bet that yeah. was looking great on cashing. But um, Raul Rosas is the pick here. If you want to take inside the distance, I get it. Um, the only thing you can do is, you know, parlay piece or something with that one. So, Edgar Chires and Josh Van, kind of a late addition to the card. What's your make on this fight? Fight goes the distance, <laughs> just like we just said. Fight goes the distance. Uh, Chires, I think his only finished condition in this fight is going to be submission. I know Van got knocked out by Charles Johnson, but we really all have to pump our brakes assuming that we know who a fighter is. Anybody can be knocked out by anybody, okay? It's that simple. If you put Andy in the ring with Francis Ngannou, there is a perfect strike that Andy could throw to knock out Francis and Ghana. It's just you, you, you better, yeah, right in a kiss. It's right again. Damn right. Get Andy mad. All right. Turns into the Hulk. <laughs> don't mad, don't get him mad on Twitter. He'll find you. <laughs> I I just I'm not ready to buy into the fact that Josh Van is chinny. And I think that China has a hell of a chin. So if you put those two together, we're probably going to see a really high pace fight. And the only way we're going to get a, a, a finish. Is really, I, I would assume if Chires uh, gasses out, I don't see Van gassing out. So I think this is if it starts round three, like or again, like like we said, if it starts round two, I don't see a third round KO coming from Chires. I just don't, and I think Van's good enough on the ground to stunt the submissions. If I had to pick a side, I'm going to pick Josh Van because I think he's going to be a little bit better on the feet. And I also think he's not a scrub on the ground. He'll be able to stay safe and say how Chires is guillotine. Because uh, that's his move. And again, we, we talk about the guillotine, the four loco. We can see Chires jump that guillotine and then end up on bottom with Josh Van on top and just taking away time. Yeah. Yeah. The overs is a good one. Um, you know, some, you know, signature finishing moves, you know, punches, the leg kicks. Mine is firing off an angry email. 
Mm. Um, so, so if I get in the ring, you best believe I, I will text you. <laughs> I will text HR. Um, I, I'm not a Josh Van fan. Um, I picked them to lose against Charles Johnson. I just don't see it. A split decision against Zalga Samagulov. Come on. Uh, Borjas is awful. Uh, he, he's 0-2. And then, I mean, this, you know, this uh, Bunez – uh, fight. I mean, first off, uh, this guy, nice you just, you, you can't, I, I can't take this guy serious. This guy's mm-hmm. three and five in his last eight fights. And I just see holes in Josh Van. I think he slows down as the fight goes on. I don't see the big, awesome striking um, on the feet, not in the UFC split against Zalgas, you know, decision against Boros ground and pound. Um, and then he gets knocked out on the feet. I, 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 I just, I feel like I'm on an Island here. Thinking Josh Bain is not is is just not all he's hyped up to be, and I gotta be honest, I think he, I, I just think this price is insane. Edgar Chirez yeah. at plus money, I'll take it absolutely. I agree with you that over is pretty good. Chirez has had a wild run here, mm-hmm. so this 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 was I, this fight against Vasquez. I believe that was one where the ref didn't realize the guy was unconscious and. When I walk, Chirez has him in this ridiculous arm bar, and the guy's unconscious. His arm is just completely snapped. I was like, "Well, that guy's career's over." This is crazy. This guy fought <laughs> six months later. Yeah, I, I, if you would have told me in the moment that guy's going to go on to win his next two fights, <laughs> like I was, no way. Um, He's got bills, Andy. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, so it's for it, short notice against Tyra. We we can't judge him on anything because Tyra takes him down, holds him there. You don't get to see much of his, you know, and then against Lacerda, he's beating the, beating the shit out of Lacerda. Cause that's what everyone does. They miraculously rule it a premature stop. Which was started on that so one. ridiculous. <laughs> and then they come back and he does the same thing where he beats the shit out of Lacerda. Like what have we, what can we really take away from him in his last few fights? I know his submission game is good. He's durable. Um, but, you know, where I've lost, you know, I watched him lose against Tyra where Tyra took him down. But that's Tyra. I don't think Josh Van is doing that. I, I just, I, I because the price on Van is, in my opinion, laughable, I'm just not a Josh Van guy. I think he's overrated. I cashed against him last fight. I will probably take the over in this one, but it's dog or pass on, on, on Chirez, um, for me. I also, I also think maybe not seeing a whole lot from Chirez over the last couple of years might work to his advantage. What, what is Van sure. pl- planning for? That's it's, kind of tough. You got to go back, you know, a ways to find some of these, you know, earlier fights on Chirez. So we don't know exactly what he's been working on, but for me, it's Van, uh, or I'm sorry, it's Chirez or nothing. So Yasmin, Wargi and Ketlin and Souza, what's your take on this fight? This is one I'm not really interested in. The fight goes the distance. And it's a woman's fight, I know, but I am not impressed with Ketlin Souza. Not one bit. <laughs> not one bit. There is nothing about her that stands out to me that she is UFC caliber. You cannot go to decision with Marnik Mann if you are to be taken seriously. It just. I don't, I don't know what to say about it. I, I just I can't do it. She gets her knee shredded uh, in that one fight. And I, I can't believe she came back as soon as she did. I, I thought we were looking at a multiple year layoff from that fight. That, that looked bad. Um, everybody does that to Karina Silva, who's low level. And what we saw with Karina Silva, again, is that when she stepped up, she didn't look like a world beater. Okay? She looked decent. Yoregi's volume and her kickboxing ability is very unrivaled and we're looking back at that denise gomes fight as that is just a lucky punch all right after that last fight against sam hughes make no bones about it she had sam hughes who is a gritty tough fighter in round three looking like she didn't want to punch anymore she didn't want to take any more shots and that tells you the volume and the power that this girl hits with to make sam hughes back up there's one thing sam hughes is is a march forward wrestler who's going to stay in your face so I think this is Yuregi all day long. I would not be surprised to see a finish in round two or round three when Suzy slows down. Suzy's four losses are all by finish. So when she loses, she looks for a way out. Uh, we had this read on 
Victoria Leonardo a couple weeks back. Um, yep. Where when she loses, she she finds a way out. She finds a way out of the cage. So I would not be shocked. I'm going to be interested in looking at the round two, round three for for your Iggy. I think that could be real interesting. Maybe the books are not going to catch on to the uh, finishing upside you're going to get with Souza. Um, I don't have anything more to add to that. I couldn't find one thing that I thought Souza does better than Wargi. So yeah, it's Wargi. Um, yeah, I I don't want to mess with overs in this one because. Mm-hmm. I think Warrigy really, really puts it on her. I mean, I think Sam Hughes handles Souza pretty handily, and Warrigy just really, really overwhelmed Sam Hughes, which you just don't see a whole lot. So um, I'm with you on that one. Manuel Torres and Ignacio Bahamundes. Violence, 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 violence. Uh, I will not be taking overs in this one. <laughs> not in a Manuel Torres fight. Um, this is one I don't want to pick a winner. I just want to take it to not go the distance, and I just Agreed. want to sit back and relax and, and yep. watch it. I'm not picking a winner here. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I I just think anything can happen in this fight, and I, if if you're picking a winner, it just a, it's a real real true coin flip. The odds say it. Uh, the, the the tape study says it. So um, fight not to go the distance in a parlay, and uh, sit back and enjoy the fireworks. What do you think? It'll be interesting to see what they line both guys at by finish. Because <laughs> oh, you nice get plus money both ways, now you're just begging for a finish. Um, here's the thing. Bahamundes gets hit. As good as he is, and we do like Bahamundes, uh, he gets hit. And if there is one fighter that you do not want to get hit by, it's Manuel Torres. Okay, I don't think Manuel Torres has the better skill set. Not by any means. I think Bahamundes is much better. But if you're going to be willing to get hit against this guy, I was the first person online trying to look to fade this guy. I'm off. I'm off it. He just has this outer worldly power. And we said this with the new gloves. For me to bet finishes, I need to see that you have violent one-hitter quitter knockout power in today's stake at the UFC. And this kid has it. So, yes, we're taking this fight not to give a distance. It'll be interesting to see what the numbers come out as. When yeah, get. yeah, um, I yeah, that's no, that's no more no more analysis <laughs> needed. Uh, if you guys have it, please hit the like button and leave us a comment. Uh, if you don't have a great comment, if you if you don't necessarily have a hot take, don't worry about it. Uh, let's say the word of the day is going to be air a i r. Just leave that in the comment section. Helps the algorithm out quite a bit. Um, I'm loving the word of the day on these videos. And you guys are doing a great job yeah, uh, yeah, on, him, on him yeah. too. It's it's great. Tender was the one on Contender Series. <laughs> you just log in, you see Tender, Tender, Tender. I love it. I love it. And it really does truly help us out. And we really, really mm. do appreciate that. It builds the algorithm where you know, our video pops up so we can uh, get some more views. Um, we all know it's about just trying to provide the best value and the best advice that we have. But uh, as a little token of appreciation, just hitting the like button and leaving a quick little comment helps us out as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. A uh, ton of NFL content, a uh, ton of, of MMA, UFC content. We are up. Uh, yeah, there it is. Let's go ahead and show it. Why not brag here? Up 151 units, all sports uh, mm-hmm. for 2024. So um, love and life. MMA has been really, really good to us basically the entire year. Uh, smoked UFC uh, last week. That was a real bright spot. Uh, yeah. bright spot for us last week so um looking to continue that but you can help us out by subscribing and if you're interested in our plays they are all available over at wagertalk.com a big nfl week and of course uh, ufc noche let's talk about aldana and norma dumont i myself am stunned that money is coming in on a certain way because i gotta tell you i love aldana in this one uh but I'm already looking at pushback. Dumont seems to be a pretty popular pick. I'm interested in your take. I felt like we were on an island. Uh, the line movement is interesting. Uh, everybody loves Norm from what I, what I, who I've been talking to. Yeah. Uh, and I just can't get behind this girl, man. I don't really care if she gets her weight issues figured out. Her wins are never impressive. Um, I don't believe that her chin is as great. As everyone thinks it is, uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Duran to me, after a kid in her comeback fight, had Norma in trouble in that first round. 39 year old, 39 year old, off a baby, 
had her in trouble. And I firmly believe that if that was not Durand and Reed's comeback fight, she beats Norm. Because really, the way she lost it was she got taken down and she got tired. But that first half of the fight, she was running away with it. I thought she looked fantastic. And the cardio just, you know, you're 39 years old, off a baby. That's what happens. Um, can't get behind her not finishing Chelsea Chandler. I uh, can't get behind her not looking more dominant than Carolosa. Danielle Wolf, give me a break. Okay. Boxer, as soon as she fights somebody Daniel decent, <laughs> Macy Chasson, she loses. Aspen Ladd, no thank you. So this record, you can poke a lot of holes in. A lot. Um, and I think Aldana is just always criminally undervalued. Uh, I think she's gotten better. That fight with Rosa was awesome. That was I, We were saying that could be fight of the year. And nobody just even remembers it. The, the picture of them in the hospital after was amazing. Um, she's so good toughness in that fight. Now, what I don't like in that fight is we didn't get a chance to really see too much improvement in the grappling. That was pretty much a stand-up fight. But if Norma is not able to take this fight to the ground, I uh, uh, love Aldana. Love Aldana. And if this is a kickboxing match, I'm all over Aldana. And Aldana's not small. You know, Norm makes her bones by being bigger, stronger. You know, Aldana's not strong. UFC Noche, training hard. Give me Aldana. Yeah, to me, if this if Aldana keeps it on the feet, it's an ass kicking. Um, I, I just I don't see that much from you know Dumont. She's squeaked out some of these recent wins by really boring, <laughs> you know, top control. Kudos to her. She's she's gotten the wins, but she just hasn't done a lot of damage with it. And yeah, you're right. This war against Carol Rosa was amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Rosa looked great. That was the that, even though Rosa lost, that was the best I've seen Rosa. Um, I. I it, Striker grappler, I, I guess you could say it's a grappler, but come on, Aldana is lo losing to Amanda Nunez and Holly Holm. Um, you know, 2020 Holly Holm. Yeah. Um, and, and I just, uh, Dumont is, I will give Dumont this. She's gotten a lot better. I like her improvement. I do love these fighters that can just figure out ways to win, and that's what she's done. So kudos to her. But yeah, going from the. <laughs> Durant to me, 39 years old, coming off a kid to a Reed Aldana. Um, Rene Aldana is just, um, to me, it's Aldana on the feet. So uh, mm -hmm. I I feel pretty confident in that. And I think a lot of people are going to say, well, Demoth's going to take her down. And I just don't see it. I, I, I like Aldana a lot in that one. Ronaldo Rodriguez and Odie Osborne. Hoo, 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 this, is a, this is a weird fight. Mm -hmm. And it probably is going to be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It probably is going to be pretty exciting. But who do you think takes the win in this one? I can't bet out any Osborne. Okay. I, I, I really don't have any a giant uh, <laughs> breakdown on this. I just can't bet Ode Osborne. That 12-7 and 7 record is getting worse, man. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> in a hurry. It's getting worse quick. Okay? <laughs> the man gets finished very easily the second that adversity hits. Again, it, Winning, but beating Charles Johnson by split, it wasn't that during Charles Johnson's baby run. Was yeah. that the last fight of Charles Johnson taking a fight every two months? Yeah, uh, he's, I he, I feel like he's on a really long layoff. I mean, <laughs> like we haven't seen yeah. him in a couple months. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not an Ode fan. I'm just not. Uh, so I, I can't bet Ode Osborne. I think he'll make a mistake at some point in this fight and possibly get finished. But I will not be betting this fight. So I tell you, it's not Ode. <laughs> not even at plus 114. I'm not okay. Um, okay. I, I, will, I will make this very clear. I am not betting this fight. And I recommend you not bet this fight as well. These are two guys that are just not trustworthy with your money, in my opinion. So here, I'll make the case for Odie Osborne. If he folds like a cheap tent, yes when he faces adversity Tyson Nam, he makes the dumbest move ever where he does this dumb jump jumping knee Nam clocks him and it's over uh, against Almabayev. Yeah. He gives up against Philo. Philo just overwhelmed from the very beginning and he gave up. It just, they got choked out. He, but it was, wasn't even that competitive. Here's my problem. I don't think Ronaldo Rodriguez is good at all. And in order for Ode to give up when he faces adversity, he has to face adversity. True. <laughs> and Rodriguez has to be the one applying said 
adversity. I went back and watched this Bondar fight. If you're just looking at topology and you're looking at this and you're going, oh, nice submission mm-hmm. win against Bondar. Well, you don't see his Bondar winning every minute of that fight yes. <laughs> until he until he wasn't. Um, and Bondar is not very good. Um, I I watched Rodriguez and I was like, his skills are not that good. Um, he got beat up a lot. Bondar completely gasses late in the second and then taps with one second left on the clock. Like, can clearly hear the 10 second thing. I don't know why you would tap at all, um, but he does. And I'm just not sure Rodriguez can get to Osborne and make him feel like he needs to quit. I think Osborne is kind of the play here because I think uh, if they're if, if they're both at their best, it's Odie as a, his skill set is just better. His striking is better. He's going to be more athletic. Rodriguez hasn't looked that good. But as soon as Odie faces a little bit of adversity, yes, he's going to quit. Um, he's it, it, It's not Herbert Burns bad, but the last few fights, it's been pretty rough. So – um, I, 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 I would not bet Rodriguez. I wouldn't bet anything in this fight, but for purposes of this video, I think Odie Osborne is a little bit of a live dog here. So, uh, Daniel Zellhuber and Esteban Rebovich. Uh, what do you like in this one here? Uh, Jim. So last Zellhuber fight, I believe we were talking about how, who's going to beat Zellhuber. How is he going to lose? And I believe we came down to the fact that he is going to get knocked out. Now it's going to take somebody landing the perfect shot to knock him out. I don't think that's Esteban Rebovitz. Okay, so I think if you're trying to fade Zell Huber, now is not the time. The kid is only going to be getting better. We've watched <laughs> we've mixed with McKinney. Uh, it's just, it's Terrence McKinney. He gave it to him. Like We didn't learn anything from that whatsoever. Beating Kumela Kirk, not impressed. Like Radzibov, Lake's okay. He's okay. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just not really a fan of it. I think this is a setup for Zell Huber. This is a guy they want to push immensely. He's going to have a huge physicality advantage with height. So to me, it's Zell Huber or nothing. However, there will be a time where he is going to get clipped. It may not be this time. It could be the very next one because they can't keep throwing them Esteban Riva mixes to fight. Yeah. So give me Zell Huber in this one. This is one of the more confident plays I have. And I know it's like minus 238, but I, I am very, very confident in Daniel Zell Huber. We actually said before the Terrence McKinney Rebovich fight, please let mm-hmm. Rebovich win by an early, impressive KO. And he did. And we were like, great, he's going to get a step up in competition. And to me, this set up perfectly for you. So we called our shot that we wanted, Re- we're, we were going to fade Rebovic. So we get the win against Terrence McKinney because Terrence McKinney is kill or be killed. And he the, the next time he blocks a strike will be the first time he blocks a strike. Uh, it was a nice looking head kick. <laughs> and I, I'm with you. This Kuala Kirk fight was not that impressive. Like it was close, but that doesn't mean it was high level. Uh, so wasn't impressed with him, was waiting for a good chance to fade him. And this is the time, this is the time to fade Reeves because Zell Huber, he was beating up Prado so bad. I remember this. You and I were saying the corner needs to step in. Yes. What yes. he did to Prado's orbital mm-hmm. area is going to, we, we, we said it in the moment, it probably is going to set Prado back quite a bit. That was a massive Massive injury, and the damage that he took is just – it's an area that you just can't mess with. Mm-hmm. With with UFC, And you and I were just like, come on, corner. He's not going to win this fight. He's beat up too much. Quit, like, save There's your no fighter. Reason. There's no reason. There was no reason to send him out for that third round. He wasn't mm-hmm. knocking out so – no. the only thing that was going to happen, he, he was going to absorb a bunch more damage. And I get it. All right, well, you guys are you know pussies. Uh, you'll send your fighter. You know, it's, you know they're, they're professional athletes. They're fighters. That's what they yeah. do. No, yeah. that was wrong. If we had fighters, they'd still have brain cells when they're, when they're done. Right? Yeah. So Sorry. Um, this loss against Trey Ogden really threw everybody off the scent. Actually, I'm mm-hmm. both these guys, I think. This is just this weird fight. Um, so Zoe Huber has looked better. Um, he gets the nice, uh, the nice, uh, knockout or not knockout, uh, in a kind of choke against Giagos. And yeah, you know, this guy's only 25. He's in this range, kind of like the Michael Morales where 
They're getting better every single fight. They're getting stronger every single fight. I think Zell Huber wins this on the feet. I, his, his length is going to cause Rebovic's a lot of problems. I don't see Rebovic's getting inside. I don't see any type of grappling advantage that Rebovic's going to have. I think Zell Huber runs away with this one. Not sure he beats him up as bad as he did Prado, but I could see a, I could see a very, very impressive, nice performance. Um, I will say I, this one would be a nice over, maybe over one and a half, maybe starts mm-hmm. around two. Um, because I think the length of Zell Huber is just going to, there's going to be kicks and jabs at distance. And I don't see where Rebovich finishes Zell Huber. I'm with you that Zell Huber, if he loses, it's going to be by KO. Rebovich, not that guy. Mm-hmm. Not that guy. So um, this is a really, really confident uh, pick, kind of, in, in my opinion, Zell Huber. So. Brian Ortega and Diego Lopez. Really interesting fight here. Um, so here's here's my worry. And you have to tell me if I should be worried about it or I should not be worried about it. So Diego Lopez, in my opinion, looked terrible against Dan Ige. And Dan Ige, when I say was sitting on his couch the morning of the fight, he was literally sitting on his couch the morning of the fight. He happened to live down by down where uh, mm-hmm. the fights were taking place. Ortega pulls out. They call in Ige. And Ige... I just thought Lopez looked bad. There was no aggression. There was no urgency. Ige like actually had some moments in there. And so what I'm going, what I'm worried about here, Jim, is I'm going, okay, he looked amazing. It's Gavin Tucker, Pat Sabatini. So did you said, so do I just chuck that up to a weird situation? And like, do I not even worry about that fight or do I go, man, he really stepped up in competition and he didn't look that good against a guy who was coming off the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that's, to me, that's the story of this fight. Cause I think Ortega is what he is a little bit of an aging veteran. He's had some injuries. His last win was because his opponent got hurt and he, you know, but he was losing up to that point. So to me, this fight is all about Diego Lopez. I think it's going to be one of the most public plays on the card that everyone's going to be on Lopez. My gigantic red flag is when he fought Danny Gay, who was on his couch, he looked awful, in my humble opinion. Uh, should I worry about that fight, or should I chalk it up to just a weird situation? If John Jones was sitting in this couch in Vegas, doing God knows what John Do- Jones does. Okay. <laughs> and they called him and said, hey, John, you want to fight? I don't know, give me a, give me a middle-of-the-road Heavyweight. Who's Tabora. It? Tabora. John Jones wouldn't look great. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. It doesn't matter who it is. That type of notice is insane. All the work that you've done, the strategy is totally different. There's two completely different fighters. Okay. Let's not forget, you're not even talking about the fact that Brian Ortega was an absolute shit show the week of that fight. That's the whole reason that Ige was in there. So what are we supposed to forget the fact that Brian Ortega came in how overweight and unprepared and all uh, the stuff all yeah depressed uh wanted to move to a different division openly said that this division was no longer for him he's never going to be champion again you know just in the wake of the Tracy Cortez breakup now he's got a new wife and just it's just really this roller coaster I don't think anybody would have looked great in that uh, position. What I will say is this, he got the win. In that situation, what is the one thing you can't do? Lose. That's true. He got the win. That is a lose-lose situation for Diego Lopez and mad props for him for taking that fight because there's a lot of other fighters out there that would say, no way, not happen. So I throw that fight completely out the window like it didn't happen. To me, it's an exhibition fight. It was something that was added last minute to keep some time on the card and showcase Diego. They both got paid extremely handsomely from that, that we know. So I forget about it. The original read on this fight was Diego Lopez is going to beat seven shades of shit out of Brian Ortega. Okay. Yep. So I'm not going to go off that read. It's it's okay to me if it's a public play now, because it wasn't a public play where we wanted to bet. It just so happens that it got canceled. So that's my take for this. Obviously, you guys can see who I'm picking. I'm not betting on Brian Ortega. 
Okay, the guy is made of glass. He gets hurt in every single fight, even during his own warmups. He can get hurt. The guy is a mess. He is a mess. You have <laughs> Lopez, who's been training side by side with Alexa Grasso this entire camp. That gym is all on this car. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are all working together. What is Brian Ortega doing? Working out in his garage with his new fiance? Where's the workout footage? I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing this it. This is great. It's the same soft body, the same. I said it the last time, Ortega. He looks like he's a marathon bicyclist, not an MMA fighter. And he's going against a kid who's looking to make a name now. You're not going to see that same Tim and Diego that you saw in the eBay fight. That's my rant. I'm picking Diego. We did say in the moment, like, what what was so funny was on that fight. You remember when that fight happened? Everyone was like under. We were mm-hmm. doing a live show, and everyone was like under, under. And you and I were like, Mm-mm. why? <laughs> like, <laughs> aren't aren't these guys getting paid big? There, nobody yeah. is going to lose in this situation. And that yeah. fight did look like a gentleman's agreement. Like, let's mm-hmm. just not get hurt and do damage to each other because we just got paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, both of them made good. All right, I will. Throw the Danny Gay fight out the window. He, he did win. It just the look was bad. Um, so uh if we're fighting it down stylistically, it's Lopez on the feet. Ortega's his his over his career, his striking has gotten better. It's just not great. Um, and he's just he's able to get pieced up. Now, okay, losing to Volkanovsky and Yair, you know, is is you know, one thing. Uh, but this win against Yair, it's amazing. Like, like he loses to Yair when his shoulder gets hurt. Remember, Yair was winning this fight, and Yair does something to his core, his abdomen, and you just see Yair just die. It was and one of the, the most obvious live swings. We of made a, fight. a killing. Yes. We, yes. <laughs> like, we had yeah, Yair. For, yeah, for the, for the record, yeah. we had Yair in that one, and the second we saw Yair like grab his core, mm-hmm. we fired away on Brian Ortega. So it yeah. wasn't, we saw what happened in that fight. So Diego Lopez is the pick. I know it's square. But Ortega talking about, like, there's nothing left for me in this division. I know I'm never going to get a championship title. Uh, that was just a lot of red flags on Brian Ortega. Um, all right, Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko. Let's hope this fight is better than their season mm-hmm. of the, the ultimate fighter. Um, I'm trying to – what's the name of the fade the goat theory? Fade we the have, we theory. have – I mean – we, we, we've we've gone through the history of UFC and mm-hmm. these fighters that are in the GOAT conversation, as soon as it's as soon as it's over, it is over. Like yeah. these 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 fighters that hold the title for a long time, when they fall off, when they fall off, they it's not a gradual decline. They fall off a cliff. It's like NFL mm-hmm. running backs. Um, it, it, all of a sudden, it's just gone. We're seeing it happen with Adesanya. I'm sorry, we are. We called this with Adesanya mm-hmm. after he beat Alex Pereira. You go back even to the old days, like with the Chuck Liddells and you know those guys, where it was just like, yeah. when it's done, it's done. I think we're seeing it with uh, Valentina Shevchenko here, Jim. Uh, there's no way I can bet on her. Um, like. Ground and pound against Lauren Murphy. Split decision against Tyler Santos, who has not looked that great in PFL, nope. by the way. Um, yeah, she was – like, this loss against Alexa Grasso was really eye-opening. Not just because she lost, but because it was like she had a momentary lapse of focus, which does not happen uh-huh. until you start to fall off. Uh, and then, you mm-hmm. know, you get the draw. Um, I love in the promo when Grasso says, like, what, what's like, I'm her cryptid or I'm her weakness. That's mm-hmm. great. I love that line. I'm her weakness. Uh, to me, this is like a fade the goat theory. You're hearing Shevchenko talk about, I want to be a mom. Well, guess what? Um, you're 36 years old. You need to kind of start planning for that. If your whole world is, you know, UFC right now and you want to be a mom, we're going to have to, uh, I don't want to get too graphic, but you have to, you have to get it going here, Valentina. Yeah. Uh, get that um, body so... under good, better conditions. <laughs> Less uh, stress. And, yes, yes. Uh, we also did a hilarious. We also did a really funny thing about that when she does become a mom and retires yeah. from UFC. It's just going to be great when her kid is in grade school. It's like, what do my parents do? And it was like, well, my mom used to like murder people in the octagon <laughs> for a living. Um, and by the way, she can still probably do it to all your parents. Um, to me, it's Grasso. I, I, I'm, 
I don't need to break down stylistic matchups. I think Valentin is uh, slowing down. I think Grasso is on the way up. And I think this is Grasso's. Uh, I mean, you have to go back to 2019 against Carlo, uh, Carlos Barza in a really mm-hmm. good fight to find when Grasso won. Grasso's got the um, age advantage. And watching Valentina s- slip up and get choked out against Grasso was just too big of a red flag. I will not be betting on Valentina probably ever again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't argue it. The thing with these goats is that the challengers that finally take them out, they've been watching them for years. Mm. It's so hard for Valentina to pull something new out that Grasso has not seen. There's tape forever. They're fans. Like, don't tell me that Alexa Grasso growing up wasn't a fan of Valentina Shevchenko. She's seen it all. I mean, it's only a five-year difference, but you're right. Like, when Valentina was at her peak, Grasso's, like, just now, like, I saw a golf with Tiger Woods. Kickboxing, yeah. I saw a golf with Tiger Woods. Everybody that's, like, at the top of the game now idolizes Tiger Mm -hmm. Woods. Um, And, you know. And they've been beating him up. <laughs> they've been beating yeah. him pretty easily for years now. It's a great point here. There's nothing new that she can do. She's going to have to reinvent herself to surprise Alexa. Alexa has seen it all. She's felt her power in the wrestling. She's felt her on the ground. She's taken her best shots and still stood there. And if you go back and you look at this record of Valentina, I'm not saying she's not one of the greatest of all time. She is. And she's one of my personal favorite fighters. Valentina in her prime, watching her dismantle somebody, was absolutely beautiful to watch because it was so calculated and so smart and so patient. But look at this level of competition, hindsight being 2020. Lauren Murphy had no business being in that ring. Jessica Andrade was in the wrong weight class. Okay? Jennifer Maya had no business in that title fight. Do I have to bring in Caitlin? I still can't call her Sierra Sim- Simonera. Chikagian. Yeah. Chikagian. I mean, no business being in that fight. Liz Carmouche ran away to Bellator after that fight. That was the end of that. She head kicks Jessica Eyes head off. The last legitimate great fighter, great fighter, not good, great, is Joanna. That's back in 2008. Long time ago. <laughs> So this is a different animal with Grasso, and I don't think people are understanding that. This is the old guard replacing the new guard. Grasso, I think, I think she finishes this fight. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I think Valentina slips up. The second fight was Valentina's chance, and she came away with a draw. The third time, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we see her retire after this fight if she loses to Grasso, and she rides off into the sunset. She's got nothing else more to prove. Go be a mom. You had a great career. Thank you for everything. Yeah, we're going to break down the main event here. Uh, Sean O'Malley and um, Rob here. So if you guys haven't hit the like button, go ahead and do that. Leave a comment. Well, the word of the day is air. If you don't have a great hot take, just leave just in the comments. Just put air uh, down there. Um, we do. I love that we have. Um, so Jim and, I, Jim and I had noticed that we get a, a lot of views after the event is over. <laughs> On Dana White Contender Series videos and the UFC, and nobody leaves a comment saying, hey, I just watched your video to check and see how you guys did in your predictions. Great job. It's always like, mm-hmm. oh, you messed up this one. You got uh, this sorry. one wrong. So I was like, we need a nickname, and Nathan always comes through in the clutch. Uh, so if you're watching this video after the event is over and you're thinking about leaving a comment ripping us for a pick that we lost, uh, you are now a hindsight hater. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I so shout out Thank to my you, hindsight Nathan. haters out there. <laughs> if, you're, if you're the person that watches the video after the event that leaves a comment, if it loses, you're a hindsight hater. I, I love, love it. I yeah. love it. Love you. New shirt right? incoming. <laughs> incoming hindsight hater. All right. Uh, shout out O'Malley and Marab uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, the public is on Sean O'Malley uh, for obvious reasons. Dana White is on <laughs> Sean O'Malley. And I got to tell you, Dana White's guys in big spots have come up awfully short. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a really good <laughs> Torres Finney on Dana mm-hmm. Contender Series is, is the latest one. Um, what's your breakdown on O'Malley and Marab? Because I'm you, we, we, this is a fight we have talked about. You have a much more detailed yeah. and, uh, uh, yeah, kind of in-depth thought on this fight than I do. So the deck is stacked against Marab. Um, let's just take fighting out of it right now, okay? From a fan perspective, 
Everybody wants Sean to win. Judges are going to look at this fight, and Marab is going to get penalized with his style. In my opinion, Marab starts every round down a point. <laughs> if you look at it that way. If Marab shoots five takedowns and he only gets one and he only controls for a minute, they're going to look upon that like a negative. And Sean, even if he lands one or two flashy spinning hook kicks, he doesn't have to land them. Just throw them. They're going to give Sean O'Malley the rounds. Marab has two options here. He needs to control his bout for about 22 minutes. <laughs> So think about it. For 22 minutes, he needs to be wrestling from top control. With control. Not shooting multiple takedowns. Control. Or he's got to choke Sean unconscious. And I don't see him doing either. So that right there, take what they actually do together as far as fighters out of the picture. How does Marab win this fight? I understand it's the public. I've seen a lot of quote-unquote sharps on Marab. Here's the problem that I have with Marab. He's a wrestler, but he's a reckless wrestler. And you cannot be reckless against Sean O'Malley. Full disclosure, from Sean O'Malley's debut, I have been all over Sean O'Malley. Everybody said we were crazy against Aljo. You know, everybody said, oh, Cheeto's going to beat him the second time. He's going to do the leg kicks. Were the leg kicks even a factor in the second Cheeto fight? No, we pegged we pegged the last two fights like yeah. dead. We actually pegged the Yon. Adam and Peter Yon. We, we, the, those yep. last three were really mm -hmm. we did nail the last three Sean O'Malley fights for sure. Yes, yes. I, I I just don't see how it happens. I don't I don't see it. Marab being an idiot, he's a character now. He's not a fighter. He's a character. He's got his social media presence. He's posting pictures of his cut, which is one of the best Dana White interviews ever. So good. Talking about how stupid his fighters are. Our guys are idiots. They really are. It's great. Absolutely great. He's just saying what we're That's thinking. Dana White in his element. That is Dana it's White at its best. It's it's there is no other commissioner that does it. Like, can you just can you be like yeah. can you imagine Roger Dell me like Jordan Addison is an idiot? What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> We would love it. We would eat it up. Guys It'd like us great. would eat it up. But that's what we love about Dana. He's, uh, he's like him or not, he's honest. Him getting cut in training camp. It's, it's just, I, I'm not, I can't, I can't. It's Sean O'Malley. I think it's Sean O'Malley by decision. There is a chance that Marab is just way too darn reckless and gets caught. But if Sean starts to tire, this is another fight that I think if it starts round two, it's going to go the distance. So uh, at that point, I think Sean's going to know that I can just work this guy and he's not going to get anywhere close to me. And Marab's probably going to take it. He's pretty tough. But if he gets hit clean with a knee like Cheeto did, Marab's going out. So to me, this is Sean O'Malley, public or not. Uh, before the public money even came in, I liked O'Malley. So that's where I'm planting my flag. Sean O'Malley, one more time. Why get off the train now? It's been good. Yeah, and this is kind of similar to the Steve Garcia thing and the Kyle Barallo. Like we we've, we've had great reads on these fighters, so we just keep writing, you know, our takes on the fight. My take on this fight is I want to I I I like it to go the distance. Um, I look at the number. What is it? My, over four and a half is like minus one forty. So to go the distance, is probably like minus one thirty. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, I can eliminate Marab finishes. <laughs> he has one yeah. finish, and that's against Marlon Moraes. Arguably the chinniest fighter uh, in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah, that was, you made know, a lot of money on Marlon. We oh, ton of money. <laughs> um, but I mean, look at look at all of these. Yeah. Like, I mean, he just doesn't win. Um, he just doesn't win by by any finish. So I can eliminate submission. I can eliminate uh, a knockout by Marab. I can eliminate submission by Shadow Malley because he's not going to submit Marab, um, even if. He ducks down and pick, you know, grabs mm -hmm. a neck on one of Marab's. It's just, that's just not what O'Malley's going to do to Marab. So I'm really left with a knockout here. And he didn't knock out Jan and he didn't knock out Vera. I know what you said about that really good shot, but Sterling was the first one to say, I jumped in way too aggressively trying mm -hmm. to, <laughs> trying to punch. And there was, I mean, in, in that slow mo clip, you just see Sterling like leading, uh oh. <laughs> and then, you know, bang. I don't think that that. I don't think that he's going to catch Marab. I thought that shot against Sterling, while it was a beautiful shot, 
And while we called it, we also thought that Sterling's time was up. <laughs> if you if you remember that, like yes. like it was just like all right, like split against Cejudo, you fight the corpse of Dillashaw, mm-hmm. split against Jan, illegal knee against. It was like it's your your time to get knocked out. Um, so I think Marab shoots and his chain wrestling and his chain takedowns are just so aggressive. I only think O'Malley's going to have. How many times is he going to have a shot at knocking out Marab? Not many. Marab's going to close the distance so fast and so aggressively that I just think O'Malley has, what, five to ten opportunities in the first couple rounds. And like you said, we've seen these fights. If if there's no knockout in the first couple rounds with these new gloves, it's just really, really hard. The cut is whatever. Uh, I mean, when was the last time they stopped a big-time fight in UFC because of a cut? That just doesn't happen. That's safe for... Uh, that's safe for fixed matches in the bare knuckle fighting championship. <laughs> like, yeah. Did I just say that? Uh, <laughs> for the doctors oh, to come in cut. And and go bare knuckle off, fighting. We better fight. stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I think this goes the distance. Uh, I, I don't think O'Malley lands the kill shot early. Marab's not finishing. I don't care who wins. I've seen too many circuses in these big events. I've mm-hmm. just seen too many weird pay-per-view main events that go awry that go strange where the public gets murdered um that i'm just not willing to jump on the bandwagon my head tells me that o'malley should win because i do agree marab could have four and a half minutes of control time o'malley could land two strikes and the judges are like clearly o'malley won that round because that's how the judges roll so i don't want anything to do with who wins i will just take the over um in this fight so if you had the line O'Malley by KO, would you what would you line it at? I would need honestly, I would need four or five to one. No, like so it's it's plus one ninety. I don't think that's value at all. No way. That's not value in the slightest. No way. O'Malley by decision. Plus four twenty five. See, that's so much, so you're so you're much getting better. the value with like, so I, much I agree. better. I don't think plus one ninety on the knockout is good value. I, no I wait, not I for not, plus money, but not, not for a guy that does not get tired with his and again, chain wrestling takedowns. We've seen these fights going. These new gloves, this business mentality with these UFC fighters. If there's a guy who knows about his brand, it's Sean O'Malley and Marab, who's <laughs> and building, Marab. He's quickly right. building building his brand. I so. want to know who puts the Michael Jackson jacket on at the end of this. Oh, that's funny. That'd be that, great. If that's, O'Malley that's wore good. it to the ring, that'd good. be great. <laughs> um, uh, what do you think here? Do you have a parlay buster on this card here? Ooh, we were talking about this earlier. And, these uh, Noche fights are really tough because they put these guys in positions to win where you just don't really have one. You could do over-under as well. Well, I do think the whole public bet is going to be O'Malley by knockout. So I could most certainly see the plus 190. Oh, that's a gift play in the main event being the one that burns everybody. O'Malley by knockout is a great, that's a great parlay buster because people will see that plus money and just love it. That's a great parlay buster. Yeah, that's, that's a real cash casual uh, parlay leg at the end. Okay. Pick three fights right and you throw that one at the end. Sure, it's going to hit. (laughs) (laughs) Kills <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh Josh Van is my obvious parlay like buster. Minus like 218 people. Oh, Josh Van, he's mm-hmm. awesome. He just got he just got knocked out by Charles Johnson. <laughs> I repeat, Charles Johnson just knocked this man out. Um <laughs> so, <laughs> uh woulda, coulda, shoulda. Which one are we sitting there at the end of the night going, gosh dang it? Why didn't we lay the mortgage on that thing? I'm not gonna take yours because I already know what yours is. So I'm gonna pick it Oh, up you know what mine is? I think I know. I'm pretty sure. I, for me, it's Daniel Zellhuber over Rebovic. I, I'm oh, so, wow. I'm okay. So, I am so out on Rebovic's. And I called, we I called wrong. our shop before the Terrence McKinney fight. We were like, if Rebovic knocks this man out early, yeah. we are betting against him big in the next fight. So guess what? He knocked out Terrence McKinney big. Yeah. I'm betting against him in the next fight. And I, I, I just, I think at the end of the night, when Zell Huber is like holding his hands up at the end of round three and Rebovic is over there with his face all mangled up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just going to be like, damn, should have laid the farm on that one. That is mine. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. I will take Diego Lopez. Oh, that's I a think, good one. I think yeah. this number is low. I think we're forgetting how we wanted to bet this fight. Uh, everybody, the whole world wanted to bet this fight. 
how many months ago was that? I, I, it was. What, it wasn't that months? long ago. It Three was months? just a few <laughs> months. <laughs> like, when was that scheduled? Brian Ortega yeah, it was, was June yeah. at the end of Three June. Ago. Yeah. Now we're getting under minus two hundred on him. I I just don't see how all of a sudden, you know, uh, Brian Ortega's life is all straightened out. Yeah. <laughs> in okay. Three months. So I, I think like the, the sub minus two hundred price on Lopez is going to like quite a discount. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck on all your plays. Hit the like button. Leave the word air in the comment section, or give us your hottest take uh, for for this one. So, all right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Take care.